Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Demonheim tasks. In this video, we'll be focusing on the medium tasks. Now, before we get going with this guide, we're going to go over a few things which are the requirements and items needed to complete these tasks. So, as for the items, the only items you're going to need are in fact what is obtained within Demonheim, uh, with the exception of the Marm's Armoury task. Uh, now, that particular task requires you to make use of a coal bag, uh, or a gem bag, one of those two, uh, or herbicide or bone crusher, um, but we'll cover them a little bit later on. All the rest of the items you're going to actually obtain within the uh, dungeoneering activity itself. Um, so, as for skills, you will need a level 4 45 divination but I highly recommend any higher um, merely sort of in tiers of 10 so if you're not 45 divination you want to aim to be 55 or 65 um, whatever sort of rounds off as uh, 5 and that will make sense a little bit later on level 43 fletching level 40 thieving hunter and farming level 36 herb law level 35 dungeoneering level 32 magic level 30 attack and level 30 ranged but that's it for the requirements and items, now onto the tasks themselves. Now, first of all, these tasks can be done in any particular order that you wish. Um, obviously, the order that I'm going to list you during this guide is what I think is personally the quickest way of completing them. Um, however, it's up to you which order you wish to do them in. And also, you may have already possibly completed some of these tasks on your general sort of activities of dungeoneering, etc. Um, so if it doesn't come up with a little pop-up uh, message saying you've completed a task, it may be you've already done it. So what I would recommend before sort of going through the rest of this video is checking what task you've already completed. So if you click the hero tab, which is the helmet with the horns type icon, and then go over to the achievement tab, and obviously from the drop down menu select the Monheim, you should see, be able to see all the medium tasks. Any ones with a little gold tick next to them are ones that you've already completed, so they won't be uh, necessary for you to complete them again. But for the purpose of this guide, I'm going to treat it as if you haven't completed any of these tasks, and what would be the quickest way of completing them all as one set. Anyways, enough about that, now on to the start. So like I said, I've tried to categorise these tasks in the easiest way of completing them quickly. Um, so first of all, what I recommend, so obviously all the tasks uh, this time are going to take place within Demonheim itself, with the exception of um, the Sinkholes minigame and the uh, Fremenic Sagas, but they're all completed around the Demonheim area. Now, what I recommend, all of you should have obviously completed the easy task and got the uh, Demonheim uh, Aura as a reward from the easy task and that's going to come in handy for this one so starting off with this what I highly recommend is uh, first of all obviously choosing complexity 6 um, as your default uh, complexity for completing and then from there um, for the floor that we're going to start off with is number 18 now if you haven't used your aura today to choose which boss um, you're going to be fighting um, make sure you choose the uh, boss as the Ramonaut as he is actually required to be complete one of the medium tasks. Um, now the reason I've said uh, using a medium dungeon is you're going to require a dungeon that has a lot of resources in order to complete many of these tasks so I would start off as that and then once you've got the bulk of the tasks done you can then focus on getting all the other little tasks done that require different floors uh, etc. So do that as a starting. So the first task I'm going to talk about isn't one you're going to complete straight away but you need to be aware of it and that task is called I want it all. Now in order to complete this task you need to gain the beast mode task title on a complexity 6 floor solo. Now to earn the beast mode title all resources on the critical path must be depleted. Um, so basically what it means in every room you've often got uh, fishing spots or wood cutting spots or farming spots, divination, mining, basically what you need to do anything you can actually use or obtain you need to do so in order to get the beast mode title so you're basically using all resources up. So any fishing spots you want to make sure you've got some feathers with and fish all the uh, fish in that spot. Any trees you can actually cut, use wood cutting. Uh, same for farming. Obviously, any wisps you can obtain, use that. And again, with any mining, um, it's not necessary to use the hunter uh, ability to trap any of those sort of like dinosaur type monsters. So you're mostly focusing on killing all the enemies, fishing all the fish, wood cutting all the um, trees, farming all the farmable areas, using divination on any wisps, and mining any rocks that you can use. If it's a um, particular resource that requires a boost, that won't won't penalise you getting the beast mode title but through in the course of this um, floor where I'm talking about the other tasks just bear in mind if you see any resources make sure you obtain them. 
So the first main task we're going to focus on is called Drink Me, and that is to boost your magic level with a self-made tier 2 plus potion by actually using the seed itself. Um, now the minimum requirement for that is level 36 herb lore and level 40 farming, and the main ingredients you will need are wormwood seeds. Uh, now these are what you will plant in your farming patch in order to create the wormwood herb, uh, and you can buy wormwood seeds from uh, the smuggler once you've got enough coins, and you should find a fair few farming patches around the area and once you've um, obviously got the wormwood herb you want to with a vial of water and some void dust again both can be purchased from the smuggler um, create a magic potion and once you drink the magic potion once you've made it it will come up with a task being completed so the next task we're going to complete is called Spinal Trap and that's to set a spine beam trap that you have made yourself and that requires 43 fletching and 40 hunter and obviously some spine beam branches. So you can either A, wait till you've actually come across a spine beam wood cutting spot and use the branches from there or alternatively you can buy spine beam branches from the smuggler and literally what you need to do is using the crafting uh, skill or the slice skill whatever you want to call it when you click the logs uh, you want to construct a spine beam trap and then set it up now you don't actually have to catch one of the uh, mastics uh, dinosaur whatever you want to call them uh, with the trap all you need, need me to do is create the trap and then set it up on the floor and the task will be completed the next task is called catchy box and that is to unlock a level 40 plus thieving chest um, now this one's a little bit hard to judge but this is why I recommended using a medium uh, floor uh, during your dungeoneering um, adventures so basically um, the chest all vary in the thieving level required to open them and there's no way of actually telling what level that chest requires unless you don't meet the expectations so let's say for example you're level 46 thieving you go to open a chest and it says you need level 50 thieving then obviously you know that one is level 50 um, but there's no way of actually determining any of the chests below your level so again if you're level 46 thieving and you find a chest and open it there's no way of actually telling beforehand if it's level 40 thieving requirement or not in unless it comes up with the task being complete. So all I recommend is literally completing, uh, doing a medium floor, opening every chest you can, and eventually you will come across a level 40 plus chest. And obviously once you do unlock that successfully, the task will be complete. Generally the level 40 thieving uh, chests are quite common if your thieving level is higher than that. So obviously the higher thieving you got, the better chance you have of completing that task. So the next two tasks we're going to kind of complete together and it's called Nice to Meet You Wall and Tactical Retreat. Now Tactical Retreat is to flee from a boss using a gate stone. Now not the actual group gate stone that you obtain at the start of uh, Dungeoneering. It's the actual gate stone you create yourself using a magic skill and some cosmic runes. And basically when you create the gate stone in your inventory you drop it and there's a separate spell to teleport to that gate stone. Now the reason I'm incorporating that with the other one is the other task is to kill the Ramanaut boss without getting charged. Now obviously, like I said at the beginning part of this guide, um, to choose the Ramanaut as your optional boss uh, during this floor, um, as that is one of the tasks, uh, is to defeat him without getting charged. And actually this kind of incorporates into the other one. So when you eventually find the Ramanaut boss room, obviously don't enter it straight away. Make sure that you have obviously uh, got some cosmic runes to create the self mode gate stone. And obviously what we're gonna do from here is uh, drop the self-made uh, gate stone outside the boss room and then attempt to fight the Ramanor as you would. Now, obviously he normally comes up with a little dialogue option before he uh, tries to charge into you. At this point, what you need to do is teleport using your self-made uh, self gate stone. So first of all, obviously you'll complete the task in teleporting to the gate stone. Second of all, uh, the Ramanor will attempt to charge at you, but because you teleported out of the room, he'll just run straight into a wall which will avoid you getting charged into and simply when it's the best opportunity you can go back in there and you may wish to create another gate stone beforehand to be able to do that again and basically if you use that sort of approach and obviously like me utilize them with your prayer and all stuff like that as long as you kill the Ramanaut without actually getting charged into using the gate stone that task will be completed as well so there'll be two tasks there completed uh, which will actually help each other out in the long run so when you actually go to exit the dungeon and you've obviously opened all the rooms you can and obtained all the resources you can, you're now about to basically complete two tasks together once again. So obviously we spoke about the beast mode task uh, at the very beginning of this. So obviously if you have successfully used all the resources you could upon uh, completing this floor, it will come up saying you've completed that task. 
And the other task you would have completed is you've got some nice drapes there and that was to complete a furnished floor solo on any complexity. Now um, to fight the Ramonaut you had to do that on uh, floor 18 or higher and that is classed as one of the furnished floors. So obviously you would have completed those two tasks together uh, as well. So there you'll obviously understand now why I said about doing uh, floor number 18 on a medium sized dungeon and choosing the Ramonaut as your boss as you get to complete all those tasks as one big bundle and that just saves you a little bit of time later on. Obviously if you've made any mistakes on the way you can obviously go back and complete the relevant tasks so if you've failed to sort of obtain as uh, many resources as you should you can simply do that again uh, on a small dungeon um, so it takes less time but as long as you're making sure you obtain everything uh, you can do that or if you manage to sort of slip up against the Ramonaut uh, all you need to do is find another dungeon near the floor with the Ramonaut as a boss and try that again without getting charged or stunned and either way the task will be completed. So the next task we're going to focus on is called and I want it now and that is to complete a complexity 6 floor solo in under 6 minutes. Now it sounds harder than it actually is um, but the task is easiest to complete on a small floor uh, on a lower leveled floor as well so possibly one of the frozen ones. Now the main approach to that is literally you want to go all guns blazing. Uh, it's kind of an opposite to beast mode. You're not going to bother about any resources. You're only going to kill the monsters relevant to get through the guardian doors and your main objective is just to find the boss room as soon as you find the boss room you want to kill the boss as quick as you can and then exit the dungeon straight away that's my only sort of tips to this task it's literally all a case of don't bother collecting anything you just want to kill everything as quick as you can and only kill the enemies that are required so there's a lot of rooms where you don't actually need to kill the guardians to go through the door and some of them you do um, so literally it's just a case of luck really um, but literally just attempt to do that on some of the frozen floors and eventually you'll find one that kind of suits you and is quite lucky and uh, all bearing in mind you complete that in under six minutes the task will be completed. So this is when the tasks start getting a little bit more complex now so the next task we're going to call is up to the gods and that is to sacrifice a frost dragon and this is obviously within Demonheim um, a frost dragon's bones on a prayer altar from a dragon you killed yourself in a solo dungeon. Now first of all uh, frost dragons can only be found on the frozen floors so that's the first thing you need to bear in mind. The second thing as well uh, is obviously you may encounter a frost dragon but you may not actually find an altar on the floor you're completing. Now the way to minimize the risk of that is to complete uh, medium sized floors on the frozen floors. Um, so literally that's the best approach for this so obviously I would uh, kind of start from floor one the frozen one and on a medium um, complexity try and unlock every room you can even if it's rooms that require boosts if you're able to make the boost and obviously do so um, as there's a chance you'll find the frost dragon and an alternative uh, and then also the altar you may have some rooms where you find the altar and not the frost dragon and vice versa but eventually you will come across um, both uh, alternatively um, if you have a construction level of 75 you can change the uh, group gate stone portal which is found in the same room as the smuggler into an altar but you shouldn't really have to worry about that it's literally just down to a bit of potluck so obviously just completing uh, just keep completing frozen um, medium sized dungeons until you find a frost dragon kill it for its bones and keep them in your inventory until you come across an altar and then when you do find the altar use the bones on the altar and the task will be completed so now the next task now this one I found an absolute pain and I ended up having to spend a little bit of time leveling up my divination just to make it a bit easier. So the task is called Port Enter and that is to create and use a portent of passage number five or above to attempt to pass for a skill door and it requires a minimum of level 45 divination and a minimum of 35 sparkling energy. Now first off the first piece so obviously um, the minimum requirement to complete this task is 45 divination and that requires you to find uh, sparkling wisps any lower than that will actually not be sufficient now the type of wisps you encounter through the course of dungeoneering is completely random now this is why I recommend the higher divination the better because obviously if you're only 45 divination there's only one type of wisp that can actually complete this task if you're a level 55 divination there's actually now two types of wisps that you can use to complete this task so you see where I'm going from there it gives you a bit more option to uh, look 
look for them. There's also the off chance that actually you might come across some uh, sparkling wisps. But there aren't enough in order to obtain 35 sparkling energy. Now don't forget you can convert your memories into energy using the little crater uh, that is found in the same room as the smuggler but it may still not be enough. One thing that I recommend that will help with that is obviously your ring of kinship can be customized to do different abilities and one of them is the gatherer ability and I believe one of them is when you can upgrade it to increase the amount of resources that you find from different things and this includes wisps so if you have that activated and set uh, your character will obtain more energy and memories from wisps than they normally would. So obviously that's the first piece so if you're actually able to find the wisps relevant uh, to 45 or above so obviously if um, you're level 45 divination you can only find sparkling wisps if you're level 55 divination you can start finding tier 5 wisps uh, and it's that sort of uh, number 5 aspect that is required to make a port on a passage so you either need to be 45 divination or 55 65 75 etc um, so obviously if you find the wisps and you find the energy that's all great you can actually create it into a port on a passage number 5 or higher now this is the next little trip up now in order to complete the task you actually need to use this portent of passage on a room that you couldn't normally pass through now depending on the portent of passage depends on how many skill levels difference it is um, so I believe off the top of my head a portent of passage allows you to enter a room or a skill room that is 10 levels higher than your current one so let's say for example you're 50 strength and you need 60 strength to get through a door you can use the portent of passage to get through it now Obviously, there's the uh, chance that you could find all the relevant wisps and turn it into the energy and get the port on the passage you need in order to get through the skill door, but you might not actually find a skill door that requires you to have a higher level, or it could be that it's a bit too higher than what the port on the passage is. So you'll probably find you're gonna be using quite a few different floors in order to complete this task, and I do really recommend it being on a medium size just to increase the chance of the energies you'll find, and of course, the uh, increased amount of skill doors that you have to get through. Now one little trick you can use uh, if you uh, find any forgotten mages or you encounter the unholy curse bearer uh, boss uh, that drains your combat stats it will allow you to use the portents to go through strength and magic doors that you wouldn't normally be able to go through. So let's say for example a skill um, door of level 40 strength is available however you're 45 strength. If you're able to fight a forgotten mage or unholy curse bearer they could reduce your stat uh, down um, to below that requirement and then if you have that port on the passage in your inventory and try to go through the skill door you'll actually use the port on the passage and the task will be completed so yeah like I said this one is probably going to be the one that takes you the longest and obviously uh, if you find it's taken absolute ages at level 45 divination to a find the actual sparkling wisps to get the energy and b you're not finding any skill doors it may be worth you increasing your divination level that is actually what I did so I ended up uh, bumping in mine up to level 55 just so I can look for tier 4 and tier 5 wisps rather than just tier 4 wisps and then once you actually find all the um, wisps you need and obtain 35 sparkling energy or higher you can then create the port on a passage and then it's just down to luck of hopefully finding a skill door that requires you uh, to use the port on a passage to get through. Other than that I've got no other tips for this task so it's literally a case of using uh, medium floors the higher divination the better and it just comes down to a little bit of luck at the end of the day but eventually when you create a port on a passage and you use it to successfully get for a skill door the task will be completed. So the final three tasks actually take place kind of outside the dungeoneering dungeons themselves but it's still Demonheim related. Um, so the very first task we're going to complete outside so obviously you want to exit the dungeon if you are uh, it's still in one. And the first task we're going to complete is called Marm's Armory, and that's to make use of either a coal bag, gem bag, herbicide, bone crusher, or charming imp. Now, the cheapest option I recommend is the gem bag, or if not, alternatively, you can go for a coal bag. The gem bag costs 2,000 tokens to buy. I can't remember off the top of my head what, how much the coal bag was. Um, but basically, once you obtain either a gem bag or a coal bag, um, hopefully you've got some in your bank. If not, go to the Grand Exchange. What you want to do, if it's a gem or coal, bag you want to fill it with a relevant item it can only, it only has to be one item so let's say for example in my case it was a coal bag I put one bit of coal in the coal bag then all you need to do is empty the coal bag straight after and it will record that you've basically made use of that item and the task will come up as completed now obviously if you have herbicide or bone crusher um, then obviously you've got the option there to use those so bone crusher would be a case of 
uh, killing a monster, it dropping bones and you automatically burying them and the task will be complete. And obviously herbicide is about using um, herbs uh, without using their second resources or cleaning them straight away, either one of them. Uh, but yeah, if none of you have purchased any Dungeoneer rewards yet, I would either go for the coal bag or the gem bag and then do the method I said, which was by adding one uh, relevant item to the bag, then emptying it and the task will be completed. So the next task is 300 and that is to complete Freeze Company with 100% um, completion. Now uh, you should have unlocked the Fremenic Sagas because obviously that was a requirement for the easy task and you can't do the medium task without doing the easy task. Um, now in my actual easy task guide I did speak about completing the Freeze Company Fremenic Saga with 100% um, and I spoke about that in a little bit more detail and basically to complete the saga to 100% you need to complete four side objectives. Um, um, now instead of me kind of repeating myself, I because I covered that in the easy um, guide and I also showed all the footage properly, um, I would recommend if you do need a little guide on doing that, um, to refer to the easy guide and obviously get up to that relevant task where I talk you through it properly. But hopefully those of you who followed my easy guide would have made sure you completed it to 100% in the first place. So now's the off chance you've already completed that task so you don't have to worry. But either way, to complete that task, you just need to replay the freeze company saga it doesn't matter if you've completed it before um, obviously if you haven't hit 100% you can replay it to get the full rewards and there's four side objectives and off the top of my head they were to uh, mine some rock or investigate some rock uh, to get an ore to create a summon using two heim crabs and a gold charm um, another was to pick up a broken sword that uh, disintegrates into some sort of material and then the fourth task was to find a pickaxe and then to use it to mine some some relevant ore. Um, but like I said, refer to the Demonheim easy task guide for full information on that. And obviously once you complete that task, it will come up with task being complete. And then the final task is a uh, sinkhole related, and that is called totem pole position. And what that is, is to hand in a total of 20 items in a single sinkhole activity. Now, once again, I did kind of cover that in the Demonheim easy task as one of the uh, tasks there is to complete a sinkhole. And I did recommend trying to hand in a total of 20 items just to complete a medium task as well. Um, but either way, you would have completed the easy task to do these ones. So you should know all about sinkholes and basically all you need to do is to complete this task is to gather at least 20 totems or resource items and deposit them and then obviously once um, you complete the sinkhole and um, you get your reward it will come up with task being completed and like I said off the top of my head talking about the easy guide all I recommended there uh, was to um, obtain 20 mining ores and deposit them that was the quickest way of completing that task uh, and then obviously the task will be completed but hopefully uh, like like I said about um, the 300 task hopefully those of you who watched the easy task video would have took my advice and tried to obtain 20 items in that sinkhole to save having to do it again either way once you complete that activity the task will be completed so there we go that is all the Demonheim medium tasks talked through now if you've completed all those tasks it should come up with a little prompt saying congratulations you've completed all the medium tasks and talk to the relevant person to obtain your rewards now if it didn't come up with that little chat box it's either one or two things a you could have been in the middle of something like combat and accidentally click through it so you didn't see the notification or you haven't completed one of the tasks correctly so if you are concerned that you haven't completed all the tasks um, just go to the heroes tab and then go to the achievements and double check that all your medium tasks have a little gold tick next to them any of them that haven't you obviously haven't completed that task properly and will need to really go about doing it um, but hopefully if you've been following my guys sort of from start to finish you should have covered all the tasks and that shouldn't be a problem for you uh, either way, in order to uh, obtain the rewards for completing the medium task, we need to go speak to the Dungeoneer and Rewards guy, who we actually get the coal bag from, um, who is on the surface. You want to go talk to him uh, to finish the medium task and get your rewards. So after talking to him, he will congratulate you for uh, completing all the medium tasks and give you relevant rewards. So well done guys, you've now finally got through the medium domain harm tasks, which obviously are a lot longer than the easy ones, uh, especially a couple of them like the frost dragon bones uh, on the altar and obviously the portal and passage. However, your rewards, you will receive a magic lamp which will give you 8,000 experience at a skill of your choice above level 41. You'll get a one-off payment of 2,000 dungeoneering tokens, so that's kind of reimbursing what you had to pay out for 
for either a gem bag or a coal bag. You'll also now get a Demonheim Aura 2, which is an upgrade with the following additional benefits. So, first of all, when worn, uh, ammo is returned to you like Ava's accumulator within Demonheims. If you're using arrows, uh, instead of having to pick them up, that will be automatically magneted back to you. Uh, bones are automatically buried like the Bone Crusher within Demonheim, so you won't have to worry about collecting bones anymore, which is pretty handy, so you'll just get prior experience all the time every time you kill an enemy. Uh, you'll also get access to an extended portion of the Demonheim Peninsula Resource Dungeon, uh, which contains you trees and a bank deposit box so that's a nice little area to do some woodcutting training uh, and at all times now the secondary roll effectiveness is increased to 50% so that's talking about your ring of kinship you'll have access uh, to a new bind slot for potions you can actually start binding potions to yourself so every star of a uh, dungeon nearing floor you'll have a potion to use and the smuggler will provide 40 lore and 40 cosmic runes in every dungeon so again that's pretty handy in creating gate stones and that as well. So overall these tasks aren't too bad, they're a lot less than what the easy tasks are, however they're a little bit more difficult, especially the ones with like the Frost Dragon and the Portland of Passage. It will require you to go through a few different floors, but eventually you'll be lucky and get all the uh, resources you need in order to complete those tasks. And the rewards are pretty decent, especially the uh, ammo being um, sent back to you like Ava's Accumulator, and obviously the extra sort of bits you get on each floor as well. Um, and obviously you'll now be able to access the hard uh, tasks once you have the the relevant requirements in order to do so. But yeah, I don't think you'll run into problems following my guide. However, if you do get stuck, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best as I can. If not, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers everyone, bye bye.